All right. Hello, everybody. This is Judy Weber here, and I wanted to record this as promised to take you through the Faith Fueled Business Workshop, Unapologetically Living Your Faith as CEO. I mean, here we are with the International Christian Coaching Institute, and what a fabulous conference, wasn't it? Ah, so good. I met so many wonderful people from stage and, and the attendees. It was just all around amazing. So I, my prayer here is that you will leave this class feeling inspired, empowered, optimistic, expectant, and faith-filled with a renewed faith. Because, but more than that, it is really important that you leave here with, you know, a renewed sense of purpose and knowing, which is faith, knowing and believing, like deep down in your soul, that in pursuing your business, that you are really fulfilling God's purpose for your life, right? And some of you are in the ministry, but no matter if it's, you know, as long as dollars are involved and in virtually everything there is, right? We have ministry, we have nonprofit, we have business. We need to keep our eyes on what do we need to impact lives, right? And so the inspiration is so important, but even more than that is the implementation of what you learn. Right. And so I always kid around with my clients. And so I'll say it here. Whatever the question is, the answer is Jesus. If you have a question, the answer is Jesus. So, for example, if you don't know of a lot of I don't know how to market my business. I don't know much about marketing. No, you do. Go to the Lord. There's no better marketer than him. <laughs> OK, so just know that any of the questions you have, like there's a lot of questions about the how. You know, oh, okay, well, you say to do this, but how exactly do I do that? Believe me, that's just the human brain, the way it works. But I want to assure you that you, the only way you know the how is by going through it and figuring it out. Like you have to do it. Um, it's great to have plans and um, frameworks and templates and things like that. But more importantly than the how is your belief, which is your faith and your thoughts behind the actions that you're taking. Trust me on that. All right, really briefly who I am. My name is Judy Weber. I am a Christian business coach for women and I teach you how to do business God's way. Faithfully, first and foremost, right? Everything is built on faith. Joyfully, impactfully, profitably, and simply. I'm a former trial lawyer and C-suite executive turned business strategist. And so it's funny, even when I look at some of the things that I've been able to accomplish by God's grace, let me tell you something. I come from very poor stock. <laughs> Daddy was a factory worker, mom stayed home. So it's amazing and it's only by God's hand that I was able to get to college and graduate or to get to law school and graduate and then to get these power positions and now finally finding my calling and living it out. It's amazing. And so my whole shtick, which I don't like that word, but it came to me, so I'm going to go with it, is normalizing miraculous results, right? We're Christians and our God is a God of miracles. Hallelujah. And so I, I really have found for myself, and so I pass it along to my clients, that we need to stop thinking small. We need to stop kind of basing what we expect in the natural, right? As Christians, we have the power of Christ inside us, hallelujah. And so we are to operate in the supernatural. And so we should not be worried about what's reasonable or practical or probable or likely. We should concern ourselves with what miracle am I, is going to happen today because God is moving in this business. It is his business, but by his grace and his you know, sovereignty, he decided that this is something that I will be doing for him here on the earth. Like I'm his hands and feet, but I'm going for the miraculous. I'm not worried about what is normal or reasonable or expected or, you know, what my quote unquote competitors are doing. Okay. I'm really adamant about that. So I have been blessed to be on local television. I've been featured in Forbes and other places on stages. And that picture of me on the beach, that is in my happy place, Rosemary Beach, Florida. If you don't know anything about it, Google it. It's the most amazing place, I believe, on God's green earth. And so anyway, that's a little bit about me. Let's, let's jump in. Oh, I did want you to know that if you do not already know, 
I have a podcast called the Joyful Scaling Podcast, and it's all things faith and business for Christian women. Now, guys, listen, I'm sure some guys are going to be listening to this. Everything that I'm talking about, they are, you know, based in scripture, number one, and also based in timeless business principles that I've learned after 30 years of being in business, most of it sales in some form or another. So a lot of what I say is going to apply to you. So you could certainly benefit from the podcast, but I do know that women have a certain, uh, certain characteristics, certain, you know, God made women differently. And so the perspective from which I approach things is from that perspective. So I think it might be interesting for you to take a listen. So live, I would have asked this question, but now I want you to kind of consider how long have you been in business? And no matter where you fall here, I want you to know that you are just one thought away from a miraculous business, from a business or a ministry or nonprofit that is just doing truly amazing things. So we're going to start right with this obvious question. What is business? It's really serving people. It is serving people. So many times we overcomplicate it. Oh, it's e-commerce or it's, you know, um, all these complicated words. It's two words. Business is serving people. And so there is nothing to be ashamed of. There is nothing sinful about it. <laughs> In fact, I'm going to go out on a limb here that for me, if we do not boldly pursue our calling, and, and, and be super great stewards of the talents and gifts that the Lord God gave us by boldly going out there and telling the word about, world about what we do, who we are in him and what we do, then I believe we are in the same position as in the parable of the talents when the, the one guy, you know, had one talent and he buried it. And do you remember what the master said? He called him wicked. You are wicked for burying that. Look at the others. They took what I gave them and they multiplied it and you hid it. And so I want you to understand, I'm kind of going on a tangent here, but it's important and the Holy Spirit gave it to me. So I'm going to keep going with it. That if you are here in business or you're contemplating starting a business, please decide right here, right now that there is nothing wrong with that. And in fact, if you don't pursue that calling, that deep kind of feeling in your belly or in your chest, in your heart, then, you know, that's a problem. Would you be the person that that master would call a wicked servant? I mean, that's harsh, but God calls us to big things, to do things that we couldn't do except for his power, right? So anyway, business is serving people. So when you look at that, then I think that, you know, what helped me when I changed this perspective is it is not getting people to buy something. It ultimately is serving them. Okay. It leads to the same thing and that I'm giving them impact and, and I'm not giving the impact for free. Why? Because I have expenses. And more importantly than that, I'm giving them such incredible value that it is only fair that they give value for that value. Okay, but business at its core is relationships. It is serving people. And we get in trouble when we add complexity. Yeah, but. Judy, that's true. You know, business is serving people. Yeah, but. No, no, no. That's where our natural human brains want to go. Don't go there. There's no need to add the complexity. Now, before I uh, get into the, you know, more of the meat of this, I want to invite you, if you are just starting out, if you have not yet reached 100k in a year which i think most of you would be in because i think i'm talking to newer business owners and that that i want to invite you to a five-part training series that is each day's training is delivered straight to your inbox so you get to consume it at your own pace it's not like you have to show up at a certain time and it's a conflict with your schedule you will get five days trainings day after day and you can consume them as you like and to register for that, you just go to builda100kbiz.com. The link is right there. You can take a screenshot of this quickly. But if your goals for the next 12 months is to get your offer set, to kind of curate your brand messaging, to develop a marketing strategy that feels good to you and is highly effective, if right now the idea of sales like kind of makes you like, ah, batty, like how can I do it? 
if you want to learn how to master selling and authentic selling and you want to get even some systems in place right from the get-go that would be the smartest thing you can do so that you can dramatically increase your productivity and if you want to build what i call a sophisticatedly simple business that is we're not building an empire it is a uh, a smaller business in that I don't necessarily need to serve hundreds and thousands of clients, uh, but it is going to be sophisticated to the extent that my expertise is high and the value that my clients get are high. And if you, if that sounds intriguing to you and you want to build your business and have it fueled by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, then this series is for you. So go to build a 100 kbizcom You're going to learn how to establish a firm foundation for rapid growth quicker than you may imagine, how to sign clients with authenticity and make a true lasting impact. This is going to be a $500 five day training, but for you right now, for the next 30 days is free for you to register. So don't miss out, build a 100kbiz.com. I already mentioned serving people is what business is all about. So really that goes to relationships. And you know what's really great? God made us women naturally you know, innately wonderful relationships. We love to help others. We are others focused, right? We love to serve others. We're so empathetic and giving. And so trust me when I say you are perfectly positioned as a woman to be great at business. Okay. There you go. And, and when I say successful in business, it's however you define it, right? Now, I just talked to you about my build a 100K business, but if you are here and you're like, whoa, like, I, I don't even know, that's not something on my radar, that's fine. But I would still say, watch this, because if, you're, if success to you is 25K a year, or 40K or 50K, this, what you learn here, I break it down and I identify three simple steps to building a business, that's it three steps. So I encourage you to do that. But again, however you define success, you are perfectly positioned to do it. Now, as a CEO, a lot of you may not have been a CEO before. Maybe you've been in corporate, maybe you've been in the ministry, but a CEO may be a new role for you. And so in order to be that CEO, you need to develop two things, your CEO skill set and your CEO thought set. Now, I want to ask you, which is more important, the skills or your thought, right? Your mindset. What do you think? The answer, hand down, hands down, is thought set. Because look, if you have all the strategies in the world, right? You have the perfect quote unquote marketing strategy or the perfect script. But as you are, you know, having that sales conversation, or as you are putting your marketing together, if your mindset is not in the right place, if you are doubting yourself as worthy, um, you know, if you are having money hangups, if you are have, if you're holding back because of these strongholds, you know, all the skills, all the strategy, isn't going to overcome how you are thinking. Right, the Lord God in the in Scripture tells us, "As a man thinketh, so is he." So important, CEO thought set. Now, I want to start out of the gate to say your success is inevitable in business. It is a done deal. How do I know that? Well, because God's a winner. This is His business that, by His grace, He decided to give to you, and so you, He's going to win, and therefore you're going to win. It's his. And that's where I want you, as far as thought set, I want you to start there. And if you don't believe that now, I get it. Borrow my belief and go to the Lord and say, God, I really want to believe that my success is inevitable because you are fighting my battles, because you are making a way. Right? And if you don't believe that, say, Lord, help me build my belief. Help me build my faith in this. Now, again, if that doesn't feel true to you, today. Why is that? We're going to come back to that in just a little bit. And I said this earlier, believe me when I say you are just one thought away from an entirely different business. And I have to say an entirely different life. Everything you have today, exactly where you are today is a result of your thoughts and your beliefs. And that is why my work with my clients is very focused on that aspect what am I thinking? What do I believe? 
because our faith is the foundation for our beliefs. Our beliefs flow from our faith. And then our thoughts flow from our beliefs. So if you don't believe that your success is inevitable, hmm, why is that? Explore that and always go back to your faith. What, 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 what should I be believing? What are the promises of scripture, right? And, and, and if I'm off of that, why, what don't I believe? Where do I need more faith? Okay. Now faith is, and I love this definition. I am, as you heard a former lawyer, I love evidence. I love evidence. And I like this, this version, this, this translation, I believe it's NIV, but I'm not, I'm not sure about that, but Hebrews 11, one defines faith. It's the substance of things hoped for, not just kind of, uh, uh, intangible figment of your imagination. There is substance there. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, right? We look outside, we see a beautiful sky, beautiful mountains, a beautiful ocean. We know that that serves as evidence that there is a God, that there is a creator, right? And so we're talking about faith in business. Think about that, the substance of things hoped for. We're hoping for something, but there's substance behind it. And the things that we don't yet see, there's evidence for the success that's coming, okay? Because, you know, what is faith? It's believing before seeing. It's knowing despite anything or everything that may be going on. Because we know that the enemy loves to steal, kill, and destroy. So the closer you get to your breakthrough, the fiercer the enemy and his minions are going to be coming after you. And we know faith is so important because without faith, we can't please God. So everything, as I said, goes back to faith. We're called to be faithful and obedient to God's call on our life. And he wants to stretch us so that we fulfill his purposes, right? And it's interesting. I firmly believe that the Lord has set it up, our life, our circumstances, you know, just this whole existence here on earth that we can't do anything of value without him. Certainly nothing of long lasting uh, significance. And so even to build a business and have those miraculous results that I spoke of earlier, there is no way we can do it on our own power. And so God knows that in order for us to achieve what he has for us, which we can't even imagine, right? But in order for us to achieve that, we need to step out and take that leap of faith and be stretched and do the scary thing each and every day. Okay. I love this verse from Zechariah, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. And here's my favorite verse. This is my life verse. Now to him, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. And here's the crazy thing. By his power at work in us. Like, like we get to participate in this. God, Jesus is able to do more than we could ever imagine. Right? More than we could measure. And it's done by his power that's in us. That is just such an overwhelmingly beautiful uh, thought and promise, right? And now here's the deal. You may have experienced this in your life and the same thing happens in business where when things are going along great, boy, I feel great. I'm a faithful person. Uh, you know, gosh, I, I, sometimes I, I get to that point where like, wow, I'm really grown in my faith. But then when difficult circumstances come, that's where the rubber meets the road. Okay. Now trouble is coming. Trouble is here. Things aren't going as planned. Now what? Right? And at that time, when the rubber meets the road, you have a choice. Am I going to stand firm in my faith, believing, even though, wow, as I look around, it's not looking too good. Or am I going to choose fear? And let me say this. When you choose to not choose faith, you are by default choosing fear. Okay? But trust me, it's one or the other. Faith or fear. Faith is of the Lord, fear is of the enemy, and I never want the enemy to win. Can I get an amen on that, right? Again, don't let the enemy win. Pursue the impossible. I see I have a typo there. Pursue the impossible is my business mantra. And as I look back at my life, that poor girl that I came from with a, you know, uh, one bathroom home and eight people in the house and, you know, uh, no air conditioning in the car and, you know, gosh, just, just, I didn't even know how I was poor until I went to college. But, you know, I saw that as I accomplished different things and reached certain milestones that 
I didn't know it at the time, but I was pursuing the quote unquote impossible. Like people like me didn't go to college. People like me certainly didn't go to law school. People like me certainly didn't run multi six figure towards seven figure businesses, right? But I have done and I implore, admonish my clients to do the same. We're going to pursue the impossible, okay? Because with God, all things are possible. Hallelujah. Okay. Now there's a difference in my mind between faith based and faith fueled. And I've trademarked the phrase faith fueled because I believe that strongly in it, that the Lord God gave me that. So faith based is great. It's affiliated with, or based on your faith on religion, but faith fueled is this, that every thought that you have, every feeling, every action that you take, it's all powered by your faith in Christ. Like your faith not only grounds you, but it actually is the power that moves you forward toward accomplishment of your goal. So I want to go back to that statement I made a little bit ago that your success is inevitable. If you don't believe that, why not? Okay. And, and at the class, what I did was I gave them some time to answer some of these questions. So I, you know, I recommend that you might even stop the recording right here and truly do this exercise. I would love you to do that. Now I'll be honest years ago when I didn't understand the importance of thought set, what so many here call mindset, but I call it thought set. I would not have paused it. I would have said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get me to the next, but trust me when I say that if you take the time to answer these questions, you're going to explore parts of your brain that you may not have ever explored before. And you'll get new insight into what could be holding you back. Or if it's not holding you back now, what very well may hold you back in business. Okay. So if your success is inevitable, does not feel like a hundred percent true statement for you. I want you to take, you know, 10, 15 minutes and write down why and answer these question questions. Why do you not believe that that's a true statement? Why do you not believe that your success is inevitable? Right? Search your brain for specifics. Where are you doubting exactly? Like, what do you think you lack? Another way to say that is what do you believe that you need? Okay. So stop the recording right now and come back and then we'll go on. All right. Okay. I want to walk you through the faith fueled thought model. This is an adaptation of Brooke Castillo's thought model. And she is the creator of the life coach school, which you may be familiar with. So CTFAR, they stand for, uh, words I'm about to tell you. So her, uh, Brooks idea is that circumstances, that's the C. So you might want to write this out, grab on a piece of paper, write the CTFAR on the left side of the page. And I want to tell you what each of these means that C is a circumstance. It is a neutral, right? It could be, uh, building my business could be a circumstance, marketing my business, sales, uh, whatever your monthly revenue goal is, you know, these are all neutral circumstances. They're just a thing like there's, they're not good or bad. They're just neutral. They're just exist, right? A circumstance and T means the thought. So in the example, let's say the circumstance of marketing my business, when you think about that circumstance, what thought, what is your primary thought or thoughts that come to mind? Right? So is the thought I love marketing or perhaps a thought is I have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to marketing, right? Those are two diametrically opposed thoughts. Then the F is feeling. So Brooks uh, idea here is the circumstance creates a thought in your brain or a couple of thoughts. And then that thought creates a feeling. So if I say, Oh gosh, I love marketing. What feeling would come from that? Probably excitement. Like, Hey, I'm ready for this. Like, um, enthusiasm, right? That feeling as opposed to, gosh, I don't know what I'm doing with marketing, which could produce a feeling of fear, anxiety, and stress. Very different feelings, right? So the A is an action. Brooks idea is that that feeling, whatever it is that flowed from your thought about the circumstance, that feeling is going to direct you to take an action. What is that action? 
And hint, hint, when your thought is negative, a lot of times the action is inaction. So on the example of, I love marketing and I'm enthusiastic about it, the action is, oh, I am gonna go to town on marketing my business, right? I'm gonna take this action, I'm gonna implement this strategy and so on. As opposed to that initial you know, negative thought, which is, I have no idea what I'm doing, and that produced stress and, and anxiety, the action is probably uh, just like analysis paralysis, right? I don't even know where to begin, right? And then what flows from the action is a result. So the idea here is in the thought of, I love marketing, everything flows, you have a feeling, it takes action, and the result is the marketing's probably gonna be really effective, right? Because of the actions you took based upon the thought that you had about marketing. As opposed to the thought of, I don't know what I'm doing in marketing, like I have no clue, and the action was non-action, and so the result is still the thought, right? The thought of, I don't know how to market my business becomes the result. I don't know how to market my business, okay? This is, now, that's just her thought model. I infuse faith on it to make it really powerful, okay? So there's that, you can take a screenshot with that if you like. Okay. All right. Hold on a second. I think because that came in. Okay. So here's the question. What creates your results? Let me go back up. You have CTFAR and it looks like action comes right before the result, but it could be the feeling that produces the result or it could be the thought that produces the result. So what do you think creates the results that you have in your life and in your business? And you saw the answer. It's your thoughts. And if you go back to that other example that we just went through, when you have the thought of, I don't know what to do in the circumstance of marketing my business, I took you through the, um, you know, what would happen with your feeling and your action and the result was basically the same. I don't know how to market my business. As opposed to the thought of, gosh, I love marketing and it's so much fun. And ultimately the result was, you know, yeah, I know how to market my business and I get results. So really it's not the actions per se, but it's the action you take that is the result of the thought. The thought really will direct the action or the inaction. And that is why everything goes back to the thought and that just highlights the importance of your thoughts. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so again, I went to this whole thing where Again, if your success is inevitable, does not sound like a true statement. Why is that? And in class, I went through real live examples, but here I'll take you through uh, one or two here. So let's say, you know, basically the circumstance here in this is your success. That's the circumstance. It's a neutral. It's like your business is doing something productive and impactful. That's the circumstance. What if the thought was, gosh, I don't feel like I'm ready, right? I don't feel like I'm ready. I know we women love to, uh, you know, just prepare to prepare to prepare because we're perfectionists and perfectionism is not good in business. It will definitely hold you back. Trust me. I know, you know, when I was in the law, I was in the courtroom and I also wrote briefs and I would labor over every dot, every, you know, period, every grammar, every, everything. And I brought that with me to entrepreneurship. And early on, that was a problem because done is better than perfect. So over-preparing and overthinking that is not a good thing. But here, so if, if your thought about your success is, gosh, I don't feel ready, what are you going to feel with that thought? Nervous, doubtful, scared, right? So again, what action are you going to take when you're nervous and you're doubtful and you're scared? You're, you're not going to take any action, right? You're going to be paralyzed by how you're feeling. And so the result is, gosh, I'm not ready. That becomes that thought of, I don't feel ready becomes the result. So success doesn't come, right? Trust me, this, this works. Sounds crazy, but it does. And in a minute, I'm going to take you through the steps of the faith fueled portion of it to turn this around. Now, here's another example. What if the thought as it relates to your success is inevitable is, well, the future's unknown. Golly, lots of things could happen. I don't know if my success is inevitable. And if that is your thought, your feeling's gonna be uncertain and uneasy, right? Gosh, I'm just not sure. 
And so the action you take will likely be inconsistent. And then what kind of result are you going to get? Well, a lot of, a big question mark. The future's unknown. And I'm feeling uncertain, right? So you see how the thought really ends up in the result line. Okay, one more. How about this thought? Gosh, I guess I could be inevitable, but, but I could fail also. Hey, this may not work. That could be a thought that comes up for you. Whatever it is, be honest. There's no judgment here. There's no shame to be had. We need to get real with our thoughts, with ourself. Because there's a way by, by Christ's grace where we can overcome these thoughts, which I will tell you are, I believe, you know, the darts of the enemy. He wants to hold you back. He doesn't want your purpose-driven business to succeed. So he's going to plant these crazy negative thoughts in your brain. That's what he loves to do. So again, going through this example, the thought is, I could fail. I don't know. This may not work. The feeling you get will be doubt and pessimism. You're waiting for the shoe to drop. Oh, I know. You know, I could have a couple of good months or maybe a couple of years, but something will happen. And with that kind of pessimism, what action are you going to take? It's half-hearted action. And so what kind of results are you going to get? Very half-hearted results. You know, inconsistent results, right? Because you're not believing that the success is yours. Even right now before you see it, because you're not living your faith. All right? Let me tell you something. Mere affirmations do not have lasting effect. God's perfect word does. Hallelujah. Right? Nothing that he says shall come back void. And so I wanted to say that because there are some people who take this model, <coughs> excuse me, and they would say, well, I know what to do to fix it. You just kind of have to tell yourself, I will not fail. Or this will work. And just keep repeating that a hundred times till you believe it. Well, that's baloney. Right? That's like worldly stuff that tells you to sit in a cross leg position, hold your, well, you can't see what I'm doing with my hands, but it's like, hum, hum, you know, or holding on to some crazy crystal or something, right? No, that's insane. Merely repeating something that you don't believe a hundred times. <laughs> if you don't believe it after the hundredth time, you know, that's not going to change anything. But the word of God changes everything. Hallelujah. Okay. So here, what we're talking about, I'm saying how to manage your mind. That is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the faith fueled thought model. Okay. So what I'm talking about is here, your mind, our beautiful human brain loves to find problems. Did you know that? And again, I believe God made us so that we will fail without him, period. I, I totally believe that. And so when uh, something comes up, even something good, a lot of times the brain goes to the negative. Oh yeah, but what if? Or the yeah buts, right? Yeah, that's true, but, you know, our brain naturally goes to the negative. And so in order to succeed in life or business, we need to learn how to manage our mind. And that begins with managing your thoughts, being very intentional about what you think about. And really it goes back to Philippians 4.8. Philippians 4, 8 gives us an exclusive list of things we are to think about, right? And I, I memorized it this way. I know it's not the order of scripture, but here it is. Whatever is right, true, or noble. Whatever is pure, admirable, or lovely. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on these things. And so when you think about that, and some of these crazy thoughts that came up, not crazy, I shouldn't say that. They're, they're legitimate thoughts. I mean, they come up, but, but they're... They only hold you back, right? When you think about that, those kind of thoughts, they just don't serve you. So the enemy loves to throw them at you, right? Okay, so here is how you manage your mind. Step one is to identify the thought. That is why I hope that you did the work and turned off the computer, uh, stopped the video for about 10 or 15 minutes and really begin to search your own brain for your stumbling blocks and for your true thought about the question of, do you, do you know that your success is inevitable? Okay. That's the first step to managing your mind. And I, it's a great exercise to have a thought audit for a day or even for a week as thoughts come to mind, both positive and negative, just have, have a sheet of paper next to you and write it down. 
right? And what was the circumstance? Ooh, I was thinking about writing an email. Oh gosh, I had that bad thought that why would I bother because nobody's going to read it anyway, right? So identify those thoughts, becoming aware of it is step one. Step two is determine the ultimate source of the thought. There's only two, two possibilities here, ladies and gentlemen, God or the enemy. That's it. What is the source of the thought? And you'll know it because if it is something that God said in scripture, then it's of him. But if you can't, you know, if scripture doesn't come to mind, and if you're not even sure, gosh, I don't know, Judy, I don't know that I know my Bible enough. That's okay. Well, maybe uh, Google that, right? Like, like, does scripture say anything about doubt? Does scripture say anything about some of these other things? Uh, the future is unknown. Or what does the Bible say about faith? for example, right? So we determine the ultimate source of the thought. So the thought, wow, I love marketing and I'm really great at it. That source has to be of God. The enemy would never tell you that you're good at that because he knows that's necessary to succeed in business. So anything that's positive, nine times out of 10, nine and a half times out of 10, 10 it's going to be of God, right? So we determine the ultimate source. And if that thought, if the source of that thought is a lie, then I want you to find the truth. What is, what is, what does the Bible say about that? Right? And then rewrite the thought based on God's truth. So I could fail or this may not work. Uh, again, I, for that one of scripture that will come back for me is with man, this is impossible. With God, all things are possible. So my thought there, I was like, I would be, I like, well, I could fail, but in Christ, I'm a winner, right? Uh, with, with Christ, all things are possible, right? That would be a much more positive thought based on scripture, okay? Now, if that new truth infused, notice I have capital T because it comes from scripture, and, and you may get a couple of different scriptures. I just gave you one example here for time. But if that new thought that we just had, right, that, that with Christ, all things are possible, and so I know that my success is inevitable. But if, that, if we know that's true because God says so, but it doesn't feel true for us, then there's a two-step thing to kind of turn that around, which is a heck of a lot more effective than humming a humming a affirmation, just repeat something that you wish were true, right? The first thing is identify God's promises that establish that new thought is for you. And basically that means go back and search the scriptures for even more evidence of God's promises and insert your name there, right? God's promises, they are all yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Amen, right? And so the more we know God's word and we apply it in our business by analyzing and being aware of and examining our thoughts, we're just going to be deepening our faith all in the process of running our business. Okay, so that's the first part of, gosh, that, that doesn't feel true to me. How do I get it to be true? Read more of God's word. Go to the Lord in prayer. Say, Lord, help me to see the truth in this. Help me to know this like in, deep in my bones. And then the second thing to do is that I want you to capture in writing, not just thoughts out in the air, but I want you to write this down, evidence that supports the new thought. So in this example of I could fail or this may not work, but the new thought was, well, I know with man things may be impossible, but with God all things are possible. What evidence do you have that would support the idea that your success is inevitable? What evidence? So that could be your certification here with ICCI or the fact that you're beginning your certification process, your past education, your past life experience. Perhaps you have coached people uh, before for free, you know, pastoring and ministry. That's what I mean by finding the evidence that supports the new thought. Okay. And it's, and that's it. Now that may seem kind of simplistic, but it's amazing how powerful simplicity can be. That's not complicated. I said that in the beginning, right? So how to manage your mind. I'm going to, I'm going to be very aware of my thoughts. Second step. I'm going to look to see if that really is a thought that comes from the Lord or from the enemy. 
And if it's from the enemy, I'm going to find scripture and rewrite the thought. I'm going to come up with a thought that is in alignment with scripture based on God's truth. And if that truth does not feel true for me, like I just don't believe it. I want to believe it, but I just can't believe it. Then we go to this step four, two step process, right? Okay. So when you've done all that, your work really begins on building that belief, which is another way of saying you're building your faith. Because if we know that your thought was, was coming from the enemy, if it was a negative thought, if it was a thought that did not serve you and it was not true under scripture and we turned it around, even if you don't feel it, that doesn't mean it's not true. It means that your belief needs to be strengthened. You need deeper faith. Does that make sense? I know one of the typical things that women struggle with is feeling worthy. I don't feel worthy, you know, uh, from different things that may have happened in a woman's life. And so for you to feel like you are worthy of being a CEO, not a pretend, but a real, like, yeah, I'm running my business. That may feel so not you, but I encourage you to read Proverbs 31 with a fine tooth comb. This woman loved the Lord God first. Like he was her everything. Okay. But, uh, she was also a very successful serial entrepreneur. Read it, right? She had a field, she made things, she had a staff. And she provided for her family and for the staff. And, and I think it was 31 verse 18, where it says that her trading was profitable. It is not sinful to be profitable. So it's easy for us ladies to look at somebody else and see her greatness. When we do something like this and we examine scripture deeply and we're going to the Lord and we're saying, God, help me to see me as you see me. You're going to build your belief. You're going to build your faith. That is what I call a faith fueled business. Okay. So, and then when I did this live, we took some time and we, uh, went through some of this with some examples, but I want you to take a screenshot of this and you may want to stop this right now and go through this exercise. Now the circumstance isn't that your success is inevitable, but it's, it's more broad, the circumstance of your business. So some of you may not have started your business before. Others of you may have opened your doors and you may be struggling to get clients or others of you, your business may be booming. So, but do you see how your business, that is really neutral. What you think about that circumstance comes from your thoughts, <laughs> right? Because even if you're in your third month and you haven't produced any clients, you know, that's just a fact. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're failing. It's all about what we think about it. Trust me on that. So I want you to go through this exercise. The circumstance is your business. I want you to write down all the thoughts that come up, all of them, just stream of consciousness. Let it write, let, just let your, let your mind go and write them all down. And then when you think those thoughts, when you're done and you've exhausted your brain on the thoughts that come up, then for each one, I want you to identify how that makes you feel. So if you have five thoughts, you maybe write those on the left side of the page and then on the right side of the page, what feeling comes up as a result of those thoughts. Okay. Cause I want you to do a specific feeling for each thought. Don't lump them together. All right. And then the action, when you feel each of those things, what actions are you going to take? And then when you take those actions, when you feel that way, when you're thinking that way, what are the results? Like just play it out. Okay. And then I just left that for, for them to figure out. All right. So if you have any questions on that at the last slide, I'm going to give you my contact information. I encourage you to reach out if you have questions. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm doing this. All right. And you can see my website down below on the, each of, the, of these slides, judyweber.co. All right, so I wanted to talk a little bit about CEO skill set. When you're talking about skill set, we're talking about decision making, strategic thinking, and thought leadership. Okay, now what's decision making? So you have to make some decisions, lots of decisions, 
pretty much every day, but but when you break it all down to getting started, these are the decisions that have to be made. You have to identify who are my best clients. Please do not go after everybody. Yes, you could serve everybody, but if you want to really succeed quicker than slower, niche down. Right. And so I'll give you the example. If I am a health coach for women, if I help them lose weight and get a healthier lifestyle, you talk to all women that is not going to be as effective as if you, for example, decide that I help young moms lose that last 10 pounds and, uh, develop, um, you know, a, a cooking lifestyle that fits in with their busy life. That's not the best wording, but it's about eight o'clock here at night while I'm recording this. And so you have to forgive me, but that is far different when you niche down to that woman and what she is going through as that young mom trying to lose weight, trying to juggle all these different things. You will talk about different things when you are trying to reach her than you would if, for example, instead your best clients you decided were middle-aged women like me <laughs> that had that paunch in the middle and can't get rid of it. Because I will tell you that the things that I deal with right now in my mid to late fifties is a very different life than I had in my early thirties when I was having children. That's what I'm talking about. So we're going to make decisions. You're going to decide there is no right or wrong. You get to decide. Okay. Another thing you have to decide is what offer am I going to do? When you get started, I highly recommend one-on-one. -on -one. When you have some experience, then you can go to group. But but even in the extent of an offer, am I going to, um, you know, am I going to have, you know, a four week program or I'm going to have a six month program or a one year program of one on one? I do not, do not, do not recommend that you do one offs. Your time is too valuable and in order to get the results that you can get for your clients, they need to commit to more than just, you know, by the week. Right. So you have to make decisions about what does your offer look like? Not the least of which also is price. What am I going to charge for that? Okay. Another decision is, am I going for the empire? Like a, like, like a big company with lots of employees and, you know, tons of different offers and, and lots of overhead because I have all this staff. Or do you want to go with my preferred model, which is a sophisticatedly simple business model where we have a lean and, and very highly effective team and we have one maybe two offers and so it's simple but there's a level of sophistication there because of the quality of the work okay so right now we're going to make three powerful decisions okay number one i want you to decide that god called you to business period if you don't feel 100 percent confident that god called you to business then go search your brain and go to god with your thoughts I see too many women that, you know, they're in business for a time and then something happens. The enemy throws his dart and then all of a sudden you're like, oh gosh, I don't know. Is that a sign that this isn't what I'm supposed to be doing? So let's decide right here and now that God called you to business. Let's just decide because there's three steps to success in business and they are decide, commit, implement. So that's why decisions are so important. So let's decide that God's called me to business. I decided it. I accept it as truth. I'm going to commit to that. That's how that decision is not just a decision that's here today and gone tomorrow. It's a decision that I'm sticking with. And then the implement is I'm going to act as if God called me to business and I don't have to worry about it anymore. It's a done deal. Like that's just a fact. I'm not going to spend another ounce of energy or time wondering if that's true. Another great uh, decision that I'd love you to make right now on this webinar is that you are an expert. You do not need to know everything. I was a lawyer for a couple of decades before I left all of that to do what I do right now as a business coach. Uh, but the first day I walked into court, I did not know as much as I did the last day I walked into court, but I was still an expert. And even if you are just getting started in your business, and even if you are not certified, I assume that if you are here starting a business, that you are an expert because you can help someone. That's what makes you an expert. You know enough to help someone and really significantly impact their lives. So decide that you are and be done. Stop 
worrying about, oh, well, I don't, I'm not as, uh, you know, experienced as this one, or I don't have this certification. It doesn't matter. Are you an expert? You need to know who you are in Christ. You need to know like who you are, uh, in, in your, in your market and why uh, people should come to you. You got to be strong in that. All right. The third decision is that decide right now that you're going to trust God's promises. That when you read things in the Bible, like all, all things are working for the good of those who love the Lord and who are called according to his purposes. I'm not, and, and something crazy happens. I'm not going to doubt that God is going to use this for good. Right. And, and in the story of, uh, what is it? I think it was Joseph where, you know, you meant this for evil, but God meant it for good. Those promises are ours because we are children of God, children of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Right. So I don't want you to doubt that God's promises are yes and amen for you. Okay. All of that was decision making. Now, strategic thinking, a couple of different things that I want to mention here. Our thoughts, we just spent quite a bit of time talking about managing our mind, which is really managing our thoughts. But there's another element to our thoughts, and that is thinking in a strategic and intentional fashion. And so in the way of positioning and marketing, that goes back to something I alluded to earlier, which is who are you, right? And who are your best clients? Because if you don't know who you are, what is your specialty? What, what kind of result do you give to your clients? And by the way, who are those best clients that you work with? If you don't have them clear in your mind, then your positioning will be non-existent and your marketing will be muddy. And I don't want that for you. So we make decisions. This is who I am. This is my specialty. This is who I work with, period. And then you, you work to get to know that best client so well. So that's strategic thinking. I'm strategic in my approach. I'm not just, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not just winging it, right? Then you also have to be strategic with your sales process. You know, I'm not really a proponent of scripts per se, because as long as we come from a place of service, you and trusting the Lord, he will tell you what to say. It's really just about getting to know someone. And gosh, I, I'd have to ask questions so that I know whether or not this person is a good fit for, for what I do and how I do it. Right. And then another strategic thinking aspect is revenue versus profit. A lot of coaches out there, they talk about revenue to the exclusion of profit. I know companies who bring in, you know, over a million bucks. And at the end of the day, after they pay everybody, because they've decided to go with the big empire and invest, you know, gosh, so much money in Facebook ads, they walk away with $200,000 if they're lucky. For me, that's working too hard. So when I work with my clients, it's not just about the revenue coming in. It's about what's it, what's left at the end of the day, right? Now, with all of this, again, I want you to go to my podcast. Uh, there's over 300 episodes. Uh, you go to judyweber.co slash podcast and you can, uh, or, or you can even Google joyful scaling sales. And I would imagine that the sales episodes would come up for you. All right. So we had decision making. Right. We have strategic thinking. And now the last thing is thought leadership that I really wanted to touch on here. Now, you are the expert. I mentioned that there are there may be a bunch of to use the last example, a bunch of coaches who are in the health and wellness space and they help women lose weight and lead a more healthy lifestyle. Right but you've got to find your zhuzh. Oh, I just, God gave me that word like last week and I just love it. I have no idea how to spell it, but uh, some people say secret sauce. I never liked that, but I love zhuzh. But you've got to identify and the Lord God will give you clarity about this when you go to him. And that is, Lord, I am a health and wellness coach, but what's my zhuzh? <laughs> like, like what, where does my experience and my education and all the special goodies that you gave me, Lord, the talents and the abilities, right? What, what, where do I stand alone? Like for me, there's tons of business coaches out there. There's even a bunch of Christian business coaches, but there's none with my background of experience in corporate at the highest level in the boardroom. And as an attorney, both in-house as general counsel and in the, in the courtroom 
and has had their own business since 2003, right? A serial entrepreneur. Nobody, nobody can touch me on that. Again, I give everything to the Lord God Almighty. All glory, all praise, all honor is his. But all of that comes together and I package it in a way that positions me and has my brand be a standalone brand. God gave me the, the idea of normalizing miraculous results. I know that came directly from him. And that came on the heels of what he had given me earlier this year, which is pursue the impossible. So it all works, right? That's a brand that the Lord God put together for me. And the more I seek him, the more he downloads it to me. And that's the part of the messaging too. The messaging of the pursue the impossible and normalizing miraculous results and faith fueled business. These are words that nobody else are, is saying because it's my unique brand. It's my unique way of putting what I do into words. And then the intellectual property. Joyful scaling is another trademark phrase. My joyful scaling mastermind is my three-step process to scaling, right? And for uh, those in the earlier stages of business trying to get to 100K, the program that I have for you is Joyful Six Figures Accelerator. Nobody else can use those words. That's my intellectual property. That is protected. It is mine. And I have a unique process and a unique philosophy of business, right? That is faith fueled, all of it. It is, it, it comes together, my philosophy and my process, my step-by-step -step and the way I work with my clients is mine and mine alone. Nobody can take it. And if they do, I can take them to court because it's trademark. Okay, but it's intellectual property. It is my unique way of doing things. And so in the way of thought leadership, that is what you need to stand out, to talk about what you do differently and use words and phrases that will, you know, resonate with your best clients. Now, I want to ask you, how does your faith in Christ impact these skill sets on the daily? Right? How, how would your faith impact it? Well, let's go through it real quick. When I have to make these decisions, when I have to make all these decisions, my faith, I can't do it myself. I need to look to the Lord for guidance. Lord, I feel like I should work with X type of people. What do you think? Everything goes back to him. We've got to seek him out in our decisions. Same thing with even down to a sales process, you know? Uh, if you devise a methodology and you say, you know what, I am going to have them apply in order to work with me one-on-one -on -one, and then we're going to jump on a sales call. That's like part of the process. And then once they say yes, then we sign the agreement and then we have the onboarding, whatever. That's like the process. Okay. But if someone says, well, I don't want to sign the agreement, what are you going to do? Are you going to stand in your faith and say, uh, faithfully say, you know, this is the way I do business respectfully. If you don't want to sign the agreement, then we can't work together. Right. I, I, I've never had that happen. I can't imagine somebody would do like that. That would not be your best client for sure. But your faith needs to fuel everything you're doing. Right. Even when you come up with your goals, your revenue goals and your profit goals. And again, with thought leadership, all of this came to me from a download of the Lord. So I pray daily. I begin my day in prayer. I seek him throughout the day because I know I may have, you know, a quick brain, but nobody's brain is quicker than the Lord God's, right? And so I look to him daily. So I want to I want to kind of wrap it up with to say, are you willing to do scary things? Right? Are you willing to stretch yourself? Are you willing and excited about deepening your faith in the Lord as you build a business. Does that excite you to think, you know what? I'm, I, I don't have my life in a silo from my business, in a silo from my Sunday in my church, but, but I have church every day because I'm going to the Lord. I'm having these regular conversations. Are you willing to do all of that? And if you are and do the work, including that thought work. And I'm telling you that uh, that was a big resistance for me, but that is where the breakthrough came. So wherever you feel like you want to resist, lean in, go into that. 
because that's where your breakthrough is about to happen. Trust me on that. So again, build a 100K biz. I've had so, I, I just released this at the conference and I've had almost 200 people sign up and I've gotten some wonderful feedback. So it's truly something that is valuable for you and that's why I put it together. It is free, there is no strings attached. You will get the trainings day by day delivered to your inbox. So if you have questions, you can reach me at judy at judyweber.co. Uh, I am on social everywhere, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, at Judy Weber Co. And my website is judyweber.co. So thank you so much for watching and I would love to hear from you. Tell me what you think about this faith-fueled workshop that we've just gone through. And again, if you have questions, you know how to reach me now. Take that screenshot. All right. Thank you so much, ladies, and perhaps gentlemen. Love you so much. Let's end in a prayer. All right. Heavenly Father, we come before you just so very grateful. Grateful for who you are. Grateful that we know you. What a blessing, Lord. Lord, I just pray that this webinar, this workshop, will uh, inspire and empower everyone listening and watching to pursue you more and more inside their business as they're making these important decisions, God. And I pray that their, um, that their mind would be set on you and set on not just the possibilities, but the impossibilities that are absolutely available to them because of the power that they have with Christ living inside God. Help us to, I always say, I love you, God. I trust you, Lord. But help us to love and trust you more and live out the faith that we profess and do that courageously and boldly and confidently and not with confidence in ourselves, not at all, God. Less of us, more of you. The confidence is in you and who you made us to be. Lord, I pray that you will un, un uncover and, and help each each person here discover uh, the doubt, the insecurities and the fears and their negative thoughts that that will that are or will become stumbling blocks, Lord. And I pray that you will clear the way for all of it. Again, we love you and we trust you, God. Thank you for how you are going to move. We are expectant. Help to grow our faith in you and in our purpose so that we can live that out fully. Thank you, Lord. It's in the mighty and almighty name of Jesus, your son, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you again for watching. God bless you. And we'll see you next time.